everybody, it's Mr. Lauber, um, ready to, for another Kids' Corner Devotion. You've been hearing about a lot of important people in the Bible in your Kids' Corner Devotions. You've heard about people like Samuel and Hannah and Job. Well, today we're going to circle back to somebody you've already heard a little bit about, and that is Paul. Today I want to talk about a letter that Paul wrote. Now, Paul wrote a lot of the letters we have in the Bible in the New Testament, but there's one in particular I'd like you to focus on today, and it's one you maybe don't know a whole lot about. It's the book of the Bible called Philemon. Now, Philemon is a letter that Paul wrote to a man named Philemon who was a member of a congregation in Colossae. We don't know much about Philemon, and in fact, the letter to Philemon doesn't tell us too much more about him. In fact, it's really more about another man, a man by the name of Onesimus. Onesimus was a man who traveled from Colossae, ended up in Rome, and ended up with the apostle Paul. And from what Paul tells us in his letter to Philemon, while Onesimus was with him, the Holy Spirit worked saving faith in Onesimus' heart. He became a believer in his Savior, Jesus. But there was something else from Onesimus' past that sticks out to us. Onesimus was a former slave. And in fact, Onesimus was a slave of Philemon. Now, slavery was a very common thing in the Roman Empire. In fact, estimates are 30 to even as many as 40% of the people that lived in the Roman Empire were actually slaves. This could be for a variety of reasons. Maybe they were captured in battle as an enemy soldier. Or maybe it was something as simple as they owed someone a debt they weren't able to pay. And so instead of paying back that money or that debt to them, they became that person's slave. Now, no matter what the circumstances were of Onesimus being a slave of Philemon, what we know about this situation is Onesimus ran away from Philemon. Not only that, but there are indications that when he ran away, he probably stole some of Philemon's money too. And that's where he meets the Apostle Paul as a runaway slave, a slave who had probably not only run away from his master, but stolen money as he did it. Now what's remarkable about this book is this letter to Philemon is being brought by Onesimus himself. That's right, Onesimus is returning to Philemon, who he ran away from and likely stole from. It's important to look at the very beginning and the end of this letter. This kind of intense situation where you have a slave going back to the master they ran away from, which even just running away as a slave was a punishable offense, punishable by really bad things. But here's how Paul starts his letter. Verse 3 of Philemon says, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace. So this intense, maybe, confrontation that's about to happen with Onesimus returning to Philemon, who he ran away from, who he stole from, Paul starts it off by talking about Jesus and using the word grace. That's not the only time we hear the word grace in the book of Philemon in this letter. He also ends the letter the same way, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Why would Paul begin and end this letter talking about grace? Well, it's almost like he's, he's framing the letter, the beginning and the end, kind of like you frame a picture. Or another way I think about it in today's day and age, um, you've maybe seen different filters that you can use on cameras or different apps on your phone or on your tablet. A filter that when you apply it, it makes everything look a little different. Maybe it makes the colors a little brighter. Maybe it makes everything black and white. Different filters do different things, but they change the way things look through the camera. By beginning and ending his letter talking about grace, Paul is framing, he's using a filter for what he's about to say to Philemon. And what he's about to say to Philemon is this. You need to welcome Onesimus back. And not as a slave, but as a Christian brother. This would have been a pretty shocking thing in the time of the Romans. For a slave, a runaway slave, to be expected to be returned, but not as a slave. Not to face punishment for what he had done, but instead as an equal, as a Christian brother. Now, in our world today, people see different people in their lives through all kinds of different filters. Maybe we see people sometimes by the color of their skin. Maybe we see people 
as people who either agree with us or disagree with us. People who are our friends or people who are our enemies. But what Paul says to Philemon, the way he frames this letter, is with grace. And you maybe know what the word grace means. You've maybe learned it in school. You've maybe learned it when you learned the hymn Amazing Grace. Grace means undeserved love. And that's exactly what God has for us. That's exactly what Jesus has for us. We were lost. We were dead in our sins. We were enemies of God by nature. But what did he do? He sent his one and only son, Jesus, to live the perfect life that we couldn't, to die in our place, to wash all of our sins away. Wow. That is a radical, undeserved love that God showed to us. Paul reminds Philemon of this radical, undeserved love in his letter. He frames his letter with this. And I think the reason Paul does this is because for Philemon, when he looks at Onesimus, if he looks at him through the filter of this grace, this grace that God has shown to us, this love God has shown to us, it should change his whole perspective. He should no longer see Onesimus as his former slave who ran away, who stole from him. Instead, he'll see Philemon as his dearly beloved brother in Christ. He will see and have the same love for Philemon that his Savior has for him and has for all of us. So next time you're in a spot where you're having trouble with someone else, maybe your sinful nature is getting the best of you, maybe someone has sinned against you and done something wrong to you, remember God's grace. Remember how God looked at us when we didn't deserve an ounce of his love and he sent his son to die for us. He loved us so much. When we look at things through that filter, through that perspective, it makes it a lot easier for us to show that love to others.